What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. Should we talking about Scream 7 in this video? Mostly here today. Kind of just theorizing about Sydney Prescott mostly. Kind of recapping Sydney and going into a recap even more so of what I've kind of stated in the past in some other videos. While also diving into a little bit of another layer I would like to see in a potential Scream 7. Scream 7 may see the return of Sydney Prescott. So I just want to go over what should happen with Miss Prescott. For as long as we've known her and as long as this series has, has existed and for mostly five movies now, Sydney has been involved in the battles against Ghostface. Whether it's her cousin, boyfriend, potential mother-in-law, brother, friends, or crazy staff fans, she's been right there to stop it. And her presence in the original trilogy is undoubtedly her fin finest work as a character due to the arc associated with the death of her mother Maureen Prescott and the trauma that she's trying to recover from during those first three set of movies. Now in Scream 4, she's now out of darkness as her book title suggests and she's seemingly happy and has put Ghostface behind her but her return to Woodsboro causes problems and as expected since it's a Scream movie, Sydney returns once again in the future movie Scream 5 but she's not the focus here and only returns to figure out who killed one of her closest friends, Dewey Riley. Now, Sydney got a much deserved break, I would say, in Scream 6, regardless of the context about why Nev Campbell didn't return. In respect to just the character of Sydney Prescott, Sydney had a much deserved break and decided to get her kids and husband to safety during Ghostface's latest spree in New York. Now, the problem right now is Sydney as a character is the lack of a story being told that can measure up to that original trilogy. She's simply returning, being written well enough to get by, and then riding off into the sunset once again. And again, like I stated, she has these one and dones that are presented in four and five very well. But that's why the original trilogy will remain superior. The original trilogy is stretching an arc over three movies, and now that's just over. Scream 7 should find a reason, a very powerful and meaningful reason, for Sydney to still be here that is different from five and four. Now, if it has shades of the reasons presented in five and four, fine, that's that's fine. The easiest thing, of course, for her to be relevant and the biggest thing to get her involved, the easiest thing anybody will associate with Sydney is go after her kids, put her kids in danger. And I've addressed this countless times. Sydney is either the focus, she's your co-focus, or you just leave her alone and just admit that her story is done if you have nothing to do for her. Now, attacking her kids again is the easy way to go. And what Scream 7 should not do is use Sydney as a crutch to propel the narrative surrounding our characters like Sam, Tara, Mindy, Chad, just to propel them even further. Meanwhile, she's kind of just there and going through the motions. We don't need that. We don't need another Dewey angle like we had with Sydney in Scream 5. That's a fine angle to have one time, considering that her arc that was already established in Scream 3 has been established in Scream 1 through 3, I meant to say, has been completed. Sure, you can create a new arc for her, but we're already too deep into this trilogy for them to just start one that can stretch from assuming this will be a trilogy you're too deep into it now for for an arc to be starting in seven and then stretch over into an eight and a nine so why not just dig up the marine stuff once more don't go too much in depthly altering anything but unravel something a little bit more that further connects the final girl you've already been establishing that being sam carpenter so scream seven should put the piece that Sydney has worked so hard for at jeopardy. That is her story. Her kids are taken from her. And also not even that the killer could start leaving around things that point towards her needing to get involved even beyond just her kids being taken because the killer can start to leave things that again will bring up the conversation about Maureen Prescott. What really happened the night she was murdered? Was there someone else involved? Yes, it's it's treading on Scream 3 territory, but it's also going to loop in the character of Sam Carpenter in a way that further connects this trilogy that's been set up for Sam and reveals somebody who, again, I've talked about this person already, Christina Carpenter, somebody who, if they had spoken up, this entire franchise and a lot of the events that have transpired could have been avoided. In a way, the silent mastermind is revealed. For anyone that likes to come up with these mastermind theories with Scream, I've seen some great ones. I've seen some ones that maybe they're a little bit too over the top for my taste, where you have somebody who's been pulling the strings from day one. Don't really like that. I'm come up with came up with a silent mastermind theory. I've talked about this a little bit in the past when it comes to the character of 
Christina. The killer not only takes Sydney's kids in Scream 7, but also starts taunting her, leaving behind these little messages, clues, maybe a picture of Roman Bridger. And then on the back of said picture, after the kids have been taken and after Sydney discovers her kids are taken, this could be our opening sequence. The picture of Roman that she finds uh, after discovering that Ghostface took her kids, on the back of this picture of Roman she discovers, it says he wasn't the only secret. So then that, of course, brings the question and the mystery into the mix as to what are we going to find out as another secret in Scream 7. And again, like I stated, that secret will be connected to the character of Christina Carpenter. Now, at the center of this right now, again, we have two characters paying for the sins of their parents, Sam Carpenter and Sidney Prescott paying for the sins of Maureen Prescott and Sam paying for the sins of Billy Loomis. One person's parent, though, could have avoided all of this if she had just spoken up and that still in my mind needs to be christina carpenter christina carpenter is still somebody i would like to see revealed as having known what billy and Stu were up to back in woodsboro in 96 she was intending to not only run off with billy when when he had gotten her pregnant but she was also planning to of course leave tara's dad the only reason she stuck with tara's dad is because billy's plans didn't go as he intended and thus she lied to tara's dad said yeah this is your baby you got me pregnant and raised sam up into a life of lies the other revelation we'll find out is that this this hookup affair whatever billy and uh, christina had going on it had been going on even during the events of what happened with marine she knew what they were doing it's conspiring to do to marine so had Christina had spoken up not only during the events of the Woodsboro murders, but also during the time in which Marine's death would have been executed or was happening because it happened. All of this could have been avoided. That's some of the big revelations you could have revealed during the events of Scream 7. Christina Carpenter, the indirect mastermind who really didn't do much other than remain silent, but her silence has created so many problems over the years. That could be the big bombshell. That is how you intertwine Sam and Sydney's stories once more. And that is what the ultimate revelation would be leading up to with these clues about Roman not being the only secret. The other secret is the fact that you had a woman out there, the mother of the child to your boyfriend, who knew all of this was going on and she did nothing for her own selfish reasons. And I do want to add that the person that is the killer in Scream 7, in my mind, would also still be someone who suffered from the silence of Christina. That person in my mind is still to this day Leslie Mocker. But of course, you could apply this to anybody, any newbie character that they could cook up as well. You guys can let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links on my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.